Welcome to Kinky Knots Cafes. Proactive is the way. Proactive is the way is a podcast brought to you by two sisters who dove into the health and wellness industry. One planned and the other by fate. We have joined forces to bring to you authentic conversations about our personal experiences as it relates to managing our health, working within the industry, and taking our combined knowledge to share with you some golden nuggets that you can take with you to live the best version of you. Over the next year, we will host two episodes a month. Each month, we will focus on a topic that is designed to increase an awareness of tools and resources to enhance an aspect of your mind, body, and spirit. Our topic this month, Get Out Your Own Damn Way, where we will feature the book, The Mountain Is You by Brianna Wyess. So during our last couple of episodes, we focused on habits, the good and the bad, and steps we could take to create more good habits and eliminate the bad ones. As we were learning about these habits, we continued kept reverting back to the bad ones. It was at this point, a thought came to mind that made me want to better understand the why behind our bad habits, our behaviors. Why do we create them and how do we get ahead to ensure that we don't permit them to surface? I truly believe that before we can start to implement a system for how to create good or eliminate bad habits. It's so important to better understand the source that got us to this point in the first place and understanding the why and being more proactive in not developing a bad habit or behavior. We will be able to ensure that we can spend more time and energy on strengthening and enhancing within our self-improvement versus constantly being in correction mode. In turn, creating an atmosphere whereby we are progressing at an exponential rate in our own personal growth and development. So Tiff, today our topic is about self-sabotage. What in the heck does this mean? Well, I think that self-sabotage means the, in the, it's the opportunities that you don't take the time to identify. And this is the opportunities uh, of things like to let things go, to make things happen, to make things better. Um, I know you said uh, about, you know, when we did, when we did our talks before about, um, so we're not always having to be in a, um, self-correction mode, but when you think about it, that's what we are because we're imperfect. We're impermanent. Um, we're always going to be, and I, I don't think we can avoid that. So self-sabotage is not doing those things that we know would be for our own greater good or for the greater good that surrounds us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does, it mean? what does it mean for you? Yeah. Well, I, I think my, my the title of this show is what first hit me, which is why I went ahead and labeled it as such, you know, essentially we just tend to get in our own way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from my perspective, I feel like we, we take action on particular issues that prevents us from actually resolving the issue and being able to move forward. Mm -hmm. I, I think it is something that occurs in our subconscious mm -hmm. and we are not fully aware that we are doing it right and oftentimes you know we think that we're we're taking the right steps 
uh, to resolve the issue or to find some sort of resolution. But in actuality, we have become so disconnected within our mind and the realities that exist, we end up doing more harm than good. Mm -hmm. But you used a very important word. You mentioned aware. Right, right. And, and so awareness is uh, awareness is attached to what? Presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The now, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're subconsciously operating, when you're subconsciously um, processing, you're not aware. And, and especially when things become a habit. Right. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so talk to me a little bit about, have, have you ever had a moment, you know, within your own life where you experienced self-sabotage, where you were like, man, I am, I'm sabotaging my own progress. Wow. Yeah. Um, there were two key moments in my life that I felt like I, you know, I self-sabotaged and it was um, really in response, I think, to um, what I call like a traumatic betrayal hmm. where you trust someone um, so much and um, you put your trust in them and then they betray that trust. Um, and your response, right? No, I'm sorry. Let me back up that because that's not a response. Your reactive self um, then formulates all of these illusions and these falsehoods in your mind because we're imaginative, right? Our minds, you know, imagine things. We think we can we think we can see things. We believe that we're clairvoyant. We we believe we have these predictions that a lot of times are false. Mm -hmm. And as a result of having those non-evidence based things or, or, or ideals, um, it results in self-sabotage. So one, one instance, um, um, was like, um, with, um, my child's father and I, mm -hmm. um, I was willing to, um, pretty much it, it embarrassed us both. Mm -hmm. Um, and I won't go into detail like of what all happened, but I um, but that was self sabotaging because I really could have, you know, like gotten myself in a lot of trouble, you know, trying to prove a point, mm -hmm. prove a point that really doesn't even um, exist. I think um, I think in a way, um, some of us and there are all different levels of it. Um, we are so consumed with ourselves that um, when traumatic things happen to us, um, we inflate, we, in, we, we cause a more inflammatory uh, consequence or we, we create that in, in the, uh, uh, the consequence that happens becomes more inflammatory um, than it should be should be um because because of our let's let's just say reactiveness our um our unaware um reaction now in your particular instance though with with your response how exactly did that did that play into other relationships or how do you believe that that was self sabotage? Did it? Did it? It, it played into other relationships and to um, other people's perception, mm -hmm. right? So it basically gave um, ammunition to something that really just honestly didn't exist for me or the type of person, the core 
the core person that I am. So I think that self-sabotage, what it ends up um, disrupting is the core. Like it can, it, it has the potential to disrupt the core of who you are. Mm-hmm. Like say, for example, I am like, um, just ordinarily, I am focused, disciplined, um, uh, reliable, um, have integrity, super honest. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you do something um, or you react to something and it is it is not parallel to the person that you really are, then people who witness it or observe it, um, they develop this opinion or this perception of you. And that could, you know, disrupt all those things that, you know, people, it can disrupt the real person that you are. Does that make sense? Well, so so you started behaving in a different manner than what you were accustomed uh, or what others were accustomed to experiencing with you. Right. So as a result, you started, they started to have a, a viewpoint that may have been negative about right. who you are. And who I really am. Yeah. Who, really, who you really are versus uh-huh. understanding that you were that particular person at a point in time. Now, all of a sudden you are being um, categorized as a person who has always been that way versus, versus it, it was just a point in time, an issue that occurred in your life that made you behave in that manner. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, that's, so sad. that's, that was to me, that was self-sabotage. Mm-hmm. Self sabotage to me also is being around people or hanging around people that don't fit your morals and values. Mm-hmm. So, for example, let's just use um, like kids in high school. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, all things don't speak to everything, but like kids in high school who, yeah, they're trying to find their way. And I believe everybody all day, every day is still trying to find their way. Mm -hmm. Um, There are a, there is a low percentage of people who know their way. Um, So if you look at um, high school students and they're trying to find their way, um, what they will do is they will associate like, I don't know if you observed this in, in high school. Well, you probably didn't because it was private, but not, and not so much, but I know like when I went to public school, like you have like super intelligent people, um, associating with the, and I want to say non-intelligent because everybody has different levels of intelligence, right? but they were of, let's just say, lower intelligence. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when you do that, um, that is kind of self-sabotage if you really think about it, like association, um, because those people have the potential, um, to cause, difficulties and um, challenges that you don't necessarily have to um, experience. So, and that is because, and I don't know what law it is or what science principle it is, but it's much easier to pull someone down to where you are than for you to lift someone up where you are, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, so sad to be they tend to want to be around comfortability and it i think it depends on someone's someone's background with regards to their securities or insecurities right? and i would say it's insecurity yeah it would be insecurity right. because you're associating with the population that is not at your level or above equally yoked is what they call it right um and and you prefer which is something if you think about like donald trump what he appeals to, right? Uh 
um, he tries to appeal, I think, to like a lower class population because of his own insecurities to be able to move people of intelligence. It's it's easier to influence individuals who possess a lower intelligence than it is to to uh, influence individuals who have uh, at your level or higher. And I want you to know that we just called his whole base unintelligent. <laughs> With that no, not of lower of lower intelligence. Well, well, his his base. Uh, and I don't care. Individuals who who struggle or who you know are looking for, I call them the great white hope. You know, someone who's going to come and lift them up. And it's it is reality. I mean, if you look at at uh, <laughs> the great white hope, <laughs> yeah, the great white hope um, that is going to help uplift them. And there's nothing, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with that. But I I feel like sometimes he moves in that direction um, because he's insecure within himself. Um, I would say the great pumpkin, like Charlie Brown's great pumpkin. I don't know about. <laughs> Let's just call yeah. things for what they are. I, I just want, to, yeah, I just want to be, I just want to be transparent here with a, a thought that popped in my head as you were, you were sharing that. The other thing that I wanted to tap on or touch on with what you stated was uh, something about your, the clairvoyant, you know, using our, our, our clairvoyance and using our abilities and you know when we when we talk about uh Brianna Wyatt's book she she mentions uh, a great deal about how we have to be careful um uh, with using those uh, we I'll call them supernatural gifts right in order to help us effectively navigate respective issues um but i want i I feel like when you you hit on that, I just wanted to address something so important is that people do have these abilities to um, use their intuition, uh, to use this level of cognition uh, that they possess in order to make decisions. People do have that. People do have that, but I'm not talking about that kind. I'm not talking about that kind of prediction or that kind of um, clairvoyance or intuition. Mm -hmm. That's that's separate. I'm talking about people who use it um, and they use it in a way to confirm things for themselves, which then comes confirmation bias, right? right? They use it to inform themselves so that it fits their narrative. It okay. fits something that is going to make things more positive for them. Okay. Or 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 more believable for them so that they can continue what they're doing, whether it's right or wrong. Okay, exactly. And so that's that's what I wanted you to clarify because I don't want folks to get the idea that those gifts are not valid. Um, and I like kept saying when I was reading uh, the book was I want to make sure that we're very clear that those gifts are very valid and they can be very, very helpful. But they can how to use them appropriately. Right. I think that within her her book, she does help to guide us to have a b- better understanding of how to use them more effectively. And think about it. So and and yeah. To, cl- to clarify even more, I'm talking about the predictions you make based off of what your gut told you, right? Because the part of the mind, the part there is a part of the brain that connects directly to the gut, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So when things happen or you're very sure, mm-hmm. like I was very sure in, what was that, 2000, 2012, I was very sure I was being discriminated against in a community, in a um, apartment community there in Centerville. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had it. I mean, the gut feeling was so strong. I called Fair Housing. Mm -hmm. Fair Housing did their shop, sent their shoppers in. And sure enough, they were um, denying 
people of color's applications mm -hmm. more than even if they were credit worthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it resulted in this huge, you know, basically what could have been a lawsuit, but fair housing trying to be fair only required them to pay me and publish on their website that they are fair housing, that they are equal opportunity mm -hmm. housing. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I had a gut feeling about that. So no, I don't think you should override your gut or override real intuition. But I do believe that most people um, create things in their mind to fit a narrative Mm -hmm. um, because they want to confirm for themselves that, um, that, that is what's true. And a lot of times it's not. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thanks for, thanks for clarifying that. Um, so I'll, I'll share my thoughts, you know, with regards to it within my, my life, you know, where I have experienced self-sabotage, you know, I, um, I went through a, a period within my life uh, where I received a, a supernatural guide. Uh, and in a matter of months, I had I became very well versed in the Torah. And all I wanted to do every morning is to get up to pray and write every morning like clockwork. Uh, I wrote prayers. And if you you look at my Facebook account, you will see the difference in my disposition from the moment prior to this supernatural guide. And then after. OK, um, so if you check out my Facebook account, you can go to Toya, uh, Toya Bryant. I, I actually keep it open because I want individuals to be able to see, you know, the difference. Um, between my 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 behavior during this time. Um, and, you know, until the moment, you know, this particular existence of this being was tapered uh, so that I could function normally. It was also during this time that, you know, the church I attended and the people within my work environment started to behave bizarrely. Um, I recall, you know, being invited to meet with a senior pastor and discussing the interactions with my spirit. I, when I would volunteer at the church, they always placed me with babies, um, which I believe was a part of an eradication of this supernatural being that they felt needed to occur. Uh, in the same instance, at my job, every time I would enter a meeting, people kept saying, 13 or 666. And their energy would become very disengaging. It, it became the most uncomfortable environment. Uh, in addition, there was, you know, other issues that occurred. Uh, my, my technological access was disabled. I would have meeting rooms reserved. And there were always people who were in my room at the time of my meetings. Uh, they overrode my calendar and would always make me have to search for new space. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. And and something told me to use the, the president's conference rooms on his floor. And in that, for me, grace was provided. So I shared a couple episodes ago, you know, this is the job where I finally got seven miles. I was telling you this job sucked the life out of me. I, you know, I was blay, right? Is what the, the terms I use. And um, after that experience, I went into a mode where I found myself being consistent and being inconsistent. I was like, this is the period of time where I had, I was always consistent at being inconsistent. And I was always quick to start something and then shift if my environment didn't feel right. And, you know, I did this from like 2016 until 2019. So let me ask you, you know, you shared your experience, what you were going through. Can you talk to me a little bit about the defining moment that helped you to identify that you were sabotaging your own efforts? Like, how did you know? Because generally it's a sub, it's a subconscious um 
reaction. We, we tend to not realize that we're doing it until a defining moment, until something happened that helped us to know. I, I, I think my um, defining moment was um, when I lost the respect of some peers. Hmm. So that that was a defining moment for me because I don't even think that I thought that they respected me in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it became apparent that they held this view of me that was more than I held for myself. Mm -hmm. And so then that's when I knew like, yeah, you need to stop. That's not, you know, mm -hmm. it's, you're not going to be successful. You're not going to, you know, reach the goals that you set mm -hmm. unless you change, you know, your negative mindset. Oh, I was super negative. Mm. Like I was like chicken little, like the sky is falling. Like I, I was unbearable to be around like with my, basically my self conspiratorial theories. Mm hmm like I, the conspiracy that I just thought existed around me until I was able to let go of these, these beliefs that I um, basically created, because I figured out I created them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And, um, so it was something within you that you just you just recognized uh, I'm having a change with my relationships that yeah. I experienced before. And it was because of that change, I was able to finally grasp or have an understanding um, that there was something within me that was causing it. I think that I know I, I ended up knowing where I wanted to go and what I wanted to be and what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I wouldn't arrive there successfully. I wouldn't arrive there safely. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't arrive there believably. Like no one would believe that I was there because I hadn't changed my mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I talk crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I, I, um, I was like filterless. Right. Right. So, yeah. and that's, and it was really unbelievable for what I'm trying to do, you know, what I'm trying to do and what I try to continue to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It was almost, it, it was, it, it was almost, um, a contradiction, duplicitous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think for me, you know, the defining moment that really helped me to identify that I started sabotaging my own efforts was um, when I I had this sense of urgency that came over me. And I think it was like my age. I was like, girl, you are 42 years old with four kids. F these people and pursue your dreams. Um, you know, I, I felt that the behaviors of others was making me move like this. Um, and I felt that if I wanted to have a legacy, you know, to leave for my kids, I, I can't, I can't continue walking in fear. And so it was at that moment, I was like, buckle down, figure out what you want to do and do it. And so I buckled down. And I got to work and I, I kept thinking that this is my life, you know, um, never in a day should I have to live in an environment in which I did not espouse. And in that, my spirit said, you know what, girl, I got you move forward and create your own adventure. Because mm -hmm. I do believe I do believe the universe will conspire to um make you successful um if you're answering that voice that's speaking to you mm -hmm. yes yes and and i did i just i just started to to follow follow that but you know it was in this tiffany that i i just i have to share 
you know, this, this other thought, um, because I, I'm a firm believer that when you are designed for something and to go back to what you said, the, the universe starts to make sure that you get to ultimately live that dream. And I, I feel like when they know that you're an honest, you're hardworking, you're an individual who possesses a high level of integrity, uh, things will start to work on your behalf. In mm -hmm. favor, right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on the flip side of that, I want to share, you know, with our audience today that, yeah, you know, I'm a firm believer that if you start feeling that people are trying to push you off your path, you will know it's your path because not only will your body speak to you, you will have this energy that engulfs your being and says that this is it. There will also be constant interference. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to share with our audience today, you know, when this happens, when this occurs, I challenge us, I challenge you to stay the course. Mm -hmm. because some people are doing it to protect you. Um, but most are doing it for self-serving reasons, more mm -hmm. so because they want what you have jealousy but you know you had shared before and we have a whole series of, of t-shirts we hope to get out here soon to everyone that's their problem right that's not yours that's their problem and, and, so I, and I learned about that's their problem really like basically not taking ownership in other people's you know belief systems about you or or whatever it may be. I learned that back in nursing school at Sinclair. I used to have this um, this African-American uh, instructor mm -hmm. who would say, I'm not, she would say it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember her last name, but anyway, um, she would say, I'm not taking ownership in your problems. Right, right. Well, because I'm not taking ownership or responsibility for that. Absolutely. Well, because it's a fabricated reaction, you know, based on on their fears and insecurities. Uh -huh. you no. Know? And I just think that we have to be better at recognizing that and ignore it and continue to, you know, get ready to bulldoze our way forward if we want to be successful. Mm -hmm. It's not like literally like the. The the noise you can't you can't listen to which actually I did a little monologue so to speak for UCLA when I say about the 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 white noise like literally like the white yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's it's a lot of noise of just people trying to take you off the path and uh -huh. it's beautiful that there is a body of and I call them you know how I call them you know people who who just have a better understanding um and and are are designed to make sure that uh, your dreams and your aspirations come into fruition those those are gifts and when you see and you have and you're surrounded by those type of people better keep and hold them close um because in this day and age it's far and few between um because i i feel like we've gotten lost also especially in this country uh, uh, idealism of gladiator games. There's, there's got to be a winner. And I'm thinking to myself, what we all can win. There is enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but, uh, to your point, uh, a couple episodes, does people behave in that matter manner because they fear that there isn't enough. Mm -hmm. right? They fear that you're going to have something that they want. And it's, and it's why, why you, right. And I, well, why not me? Right. Exactly. Yeah. We don't ask. We don't ask why enough. Yeah. Like, why not? Why not me? Why not me? But I think I think I want to uh, go back to your point when you were talking about legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't. Uh, that was an important point not to go over. Uh, just, you know, blow past is that uh, what legacy are you 
about are you trying to leave mm -hmm. yes but we think I, I think we could become lost and we think um which i think why death is so hard for some people is because they don't realize that this opportunity this experience is impermanent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so and then when people get towards the end of their life and they haven't lived the life that they want to live they kind of resent death mm -hmm. yeah um yeah um but if you're working and you're practicing daily the type of legacy you want to leave then i feel like when you're at the end it's much easier mm -hmm. it is all right so tiff um how did your environment play within your self-sabotaging efforts um do you feel like there was an element where you, i know you stated that it was you but did you feel like your environment played into also why you became the way that you are? I think that my environment, I think my environment had nothing to do. I, I, I don't know necessarily that it had anything to do, but I do know that the environment that I came from, that you came from, that Alex came from, you know, our siblings came from, mm -hmm provided us the way back mm. so like if we did falter mm -hmm. because of the environment I came from mm -hmm. but the environment that surrounded me I don't know necessarily play that part and I don't want to blame like my faltering like on anyone mm -hmm. because ultimately we have choices, right? Like we make these choices. No one's hold, no one held a gun to my head, mm -hmm. um, played with my psych psyche, but at the end of the day, no one held a gun to my head for me to, again, come up with these, you know, um, a destructive belief that could have ruined me, you know, but didn't. So there was grace, right? Um, I like that you said that, you know, your home life, you know, what we garnered from, you know, coming back to our base yeah, to gather yourself uh, so yeah. that you can, you can um, get back out and, and build a better you or create right. a better you. And I, I really like that idea, Tiffany, because uh, I think that when individuals are experiencing, you know, um, a mental disconnect or, um, you know, a, a mental lapse of some nature, if you had a very strong uh, base, mm -hmm. that is, that is the best, that is the best mode of recovery, mm -hmm. um, to be able just to come back to to what strengthened you, what, what helped you to grow. Right. right. And you, um, you remember where you came from, like you were able to reset, reboot. Yes. Uh -huh. And I, I recall doing that. I do recall uh -huh. that um, when I felt like things were just becoming very bizarre and I was like, man, this is bizarre. Dude, this is weird. I was starting to also see um, I had a, an element of clairvoyant. I never had that before I had, I had intuition. Um, but I was, I had the ability to start seeing things that I never saw before. Right. I was like literally the bubbly black girl walking around dead. Um, because I never saw the things that I was witnessing or the things that I was experiencing. And, um, I believe that my whole entire experience, uh, started to make me doubt you know, what I was seeing, I was like, what is going on here? You know? Um, but I kept coming back to my base. I kept coming back home to help ground me. I kept saying, come back to your base, come back to what you knew before mm -hmm. to help ground you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was in that coming back here, having an opportunity to just reconnect with people who love me and who were, who were, who were there for me and who were supportive of me that helped to keep me grounded during this experience. Mm -hmm. But I truly believe 
um, because, you know, in the U.S., we just don't have the understanding um, of that whole supernatural um, uh, how do, element. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we tend to try and stay away from it or educate even from a, um, a uh, religious perspective that it's, it's bad to engage with supernatural beings, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had to keep coming back to base to help me to better understand what I was going through. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, for me, and, you know, what I had shared earlier in this particular instance, for me, it was my environment. For you, you said it was more of you, but it, for me, it was my environment. Um, and I even believe, you know, even to this day, um, it remains to be my environment, my inability to continue to progress. Uh, you know, it really stems, I think, from others' fears and their self-serving nature. Uh, and as you shared, Tiffany, and going back to what your professor pr- professor shared, you know, we just can't be and we can't be vested in others' insecurities. Um, so, so right now for me, I just keep moving forward, um, all by myself with you as my support. You know, with my mom as my support, with my dad, with my immediate family as my support, and then me as myself serving as my own advocate. You know, um, the other thing uh, is I I work out a lot and I meditate on my next move. And and just fortunately, um, when I am ready to move forward, I can do so quickly because because this is the only thing um, in my life. I can do so so quickly because it's the only thing within my way, you know, as as, especially as it relates to my business. uh, in terms of fine tuning it, in terms of structuring it and building the right formula for my business uh, is me. Uh, I, I would be the only thing in my way uh, if, 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 I, if I was not being progressive, right? Um, but let me share now, now since my business is, is service oriented, in nature, I do realize that I need to help my my future constituents, the individuals that are in my environment, better understand me. I need people to be more comfortable with me and know that I I serve with their best interest in mind, um, which is why you know I I created or birthed this new initiative that you and I are embarking on. Proactive is the way. Right. So, so help me to understand how are you able to get a handle on it? You know, how are you, how are you able to get a handle on, on, on everything that, that occurred with, within your, um, with self-sabotage? Support, Mm -hmm. Mm self-advocacy concepts that you just you know, threw out there again and just blew by like it was just an understanding everybody should have, which they don't. Mm -hmm. Like, so developing a network, like you said, something really important when you're like, I need to, you know, for my future constituents, for them to understand me so that they know, you know, what center I'm coming from Mm -hmm. is a center of service. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think I was able to get a handle on things because of support. So like I had you, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, you purchased my books the last quarter of my nursing school career Mm -hmm. because I ran out of scholarship money. Mm -hmm. Very few people know I went to Sinclair and didn't pay a dime, Mm -hmm. but (laughs) I had scholarships, but I did end up running out of um, scholarship money. uh, I was able to get a handle on it, uh, from authentic support. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, reaching for people, but it were people who entered my path without me even having to ask. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have to struggle with that. Um, so, um, and people continuously positive people, mm-hmm. um, continuously talking, to me and believing in me 
And I know that they were authentic about their beliefs about me, right? Because they will always show up. Right. And those who and those who were just there for pretend or just there for information. I don't even know that I know them or think about them anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so, but yeah, that's the way I was um, able to um, get a handle on it was with the uh, proper support, um, which I don't think people um, think about. And mm -hmm. I think the authors that we have been reading touch on that is that it's not possible for you to be here alone. That that's not the goal. Mm -hmm. That's not by design. Right. Um, so there is a there is a um, meaning. There is a reason for you having a support system. You know how you hear people like I can I can do it by myself. Well, I'll just be by myself. Mm -hmm. That's not real. Mm -hmm. right. So you do need a support system. Right. No. And so because of that, and actually because of all of that. Now I want to be super supportive and I'm still growing in that area. Right. Like mm -hmm. even in my own relationship, like I don't know necessarily that I am as supportive or um, I'm still kind of guarded with my feelings. Right. Um, and that's unfortunate because I do believe like I have this potential to love like with my my loyalty um, with love would be so amazing. But there's still some things that, um, like I just, I, I just can't let go of, mm -hmm. um, that kind of are an interference. Mm -hmm. Um, so me wanting to be like super supportive, have this, um, unconditional support, uh, my, um, I, I got trust issues, put it that way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause when you experience something mm -hmm. that's that negatively impacted you right mm -hmm. and the, and how you were going through trying to understand what you were going through um yeah you definitely you you and I don't know if it's is it trust within others or trust within yourself you know to 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 make the right decision or how how, how do you how do you view that trust it was it was well, it trust within your well, maybe I don't trust well let's let's keep it just to myself right because I don't want to blame anyone I don't want to have that that uh perspective of anyone right mm -hmm. because I mean you want to be able to trust people so maybe it's that I don't trust myself enough mm -hmm. to have the appropriate response or reaction if the experience becomes untrustworthy okay Okay. So I don't because see I don't want to give my power away, right? So that's why I don't like to I don't um, want to accuse anybody or insert anybody into my experience because I don't want to give you that power because mm -hmm. when you start doing that you're actually giving your power away. Oh, so true. So so true. So that's why I don't. That's why when you're like, oh, so what? Mm -hmm. What or who? No, it's definitely not a who. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting a, another person into this, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so back to what you asked me, I think, uh, I was able to release, so to speak, um, by, um, holding strong to my support system, starting to be more aware, being more present for who is showing up for me, mm -hmm. who believes in me and connecting with them. Mm -hmm. and holding you know their suggestions mm -hmm. with with some value you know right so absolutely um I, I i'll i'll say support as well i i truly and i mean i shared that earlier yeah definitely the support uh has has definitely helped me to get a handle on things uh, but I do, I, I want to talk about um, this particular podcast, you know, uh, this, this podcast that we are doing. Um, and I'm so glad that I get to connect with you and do it because now we kind of have similar backgrounds, right? Um, so 
I, I can have an understanding of the world that you live in, et cetera. But um, the other element of this um, is I, I want to now help people. Uh, I want to help people who um, negatively impacted my growth. Uh, you know, I want to help people, those who struggle with their insecurities, bad habits, self-sabotaging and sabotaging mannerisms. I just want to help them to overcome the behaviors that are hindering their growth and the growth of others. You know, I, I do believe that they feel like they're valid in what they do. Um, you know, they, they feel that they're out here attempting to do what they think is right, but doing so at the detriment of others, Ooh. at the detriment of themselves. And I'm just now focusing on strengthening these weak links so that they can walk proudly, so that they can walk confidently in knowing that it is when, you know, we all walk and move together in support of one another, um, only then will we be able to to succeed as a nation, as a global empire, mm -hmm. you know, together, I, I want us to, to level the playing field mm -hmm. and provided that we all are working diligently, um, with integrity, uh, understand that we all will have the ability to win. And if you, you go and you read on, uh, www.kinkynotscafe.com, my story, uh, that's how I end my story. Uh, I truly believe that there is a space for all of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Tiffany, I'm working to handle this. I'm working on it now. Mm -hmm. This is what Kinky Knots Cafe's proactive is the way is all about. You know, there's just a lot of fear and people who are insecure. And as a result, they are immobilized due to their mindset. Mm -hmm. Actions taken based on their mindset. And so my goal is to help release them from the self-inflicted chains that bound them mm -hmm. so that they can walk and they can see freely and confidently. And, and so, so in order for me to get a handle on this, you know, kind of next phase within my life, where now Kinky Knots Cafe proactive is the way um, needs to grow. I need to strengthen my enemies. Mm. to strengthen the naysayers uh, because they are operating with a weak and non-progressive mind that not only in the end will be to their demise, it will negatively impact me. Mm -hmm. And so my, my, my hopes is that I want to get a handle on all of this um, by holistically preparing those in which I am designed to guide so that they themselves can be better guides they can be strong, they can be secure, they can know that they're validated because we all can bring something to the table, uh, but we need to know our worth and mm -hmm. feel confident in doing so. Mm -hmm. right. And you know, you know, for most, um, and I would say people of color, mm -hmm. we don't feel validated. Well, That's why we don't experience growth. That's why we don't reach higher potentials when you can look around and see that we if if we felt validated right if we had that kind of support mm -hmm. we would do I mean we would contribute to this we would contribute globally I mean just universally um the contributions we would have um if I had to compare it to someone would surpass Elon Musk mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you know they hold him in high esteem he's this thought leader he's this amazing magnificent genius you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. that has come come up with so many things selling the future you know right but we will be um persons of color if we felt validated we will be able to do the same thing, same things. And you blew, you blew past another concept and I should have wrote it, written it down. Uh, dang, that was really important, but I'll go back and look at the, look at the recording and I'll touch on it. Uh, 
in our next uh, next week to, to expound upon that because mm -hmm. I believe there's some things people should understand um, a little bit more mm -hmm. so that we do remain successful, mm -hmm. do reach the highest potential. Right. You no, know, before we get out of here, before we go on to our, before we transform into our next bundle of energy. Right. Right. And that's a good way to put it. You are absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Take that with us so that we can, um, so that we can further progress, you know, no matter where we go and within our, our next lifetime. Um, help me to understand if you could look back on your moment of self-sabotage, what do you think you could have done differently? In, I could, in overcoming that. I think I could have just believed in myself a little bit more. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. you we we oftentimes um are walking this earth believing more in a path others have designed for us than walking our own path so I didn't have a belief I didn't have my own belief system I had plenty of people telling me you should do this you should do that you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that you know, mm -hmm. and that's super confusing. Mm -hmm. it's, so no grounding, like I would have grounded, mm -hmm. I'd have been more grounded. Like the things I have learned over these years about um, like meditation mm -hmm. and, you know, like self-help. If I would have knew that then, mm -hmm. I think of how much more powerful my experiences could have been I feel like my experiences have been fragmented even up until this point mm -hmm. right right you know, I, I was dreaming last night and I don't dream uh, because you know I'm at UCLA and I keep starting stopping start starting stopping mm -hmm. um and I'm doing that right because I'm still with a, a piece of me likes to live fragmented right when I know that that will provide me um, a sense of completeness because mm -hmm. I will have um, reached the top tier of my profession once I obtain my doctorate. Right. Um, but I was dreaming last night, I had a paper due. Mm -hmm. And there's all these like little different things that come, I know I don't have no paper due. Mm -hmm. I woke up three or four times like, I have this paper due for this professor. I couldn't remember his name. Mm -hmm. I was looking for his phone number. Not kidding you. And I don't ever remember my dreams either. But I remember I was looking for his phone number to text him and tell him my paper would be late. Mm -hmm. And I, and then I woke up and I was like, you're not even in school. But obviously that dream is telling me that's where you want to be. Mm -hmm. You know what my mind does a lot too is, is if something is incomplete, it will not let up reminding me of it until it's complete. Mm -hmm. And it is so irritating to me. So like to the point, like, so I tell you, I had almost a hundred and something labs sitting in my inbox, right? I was like, I'm tired of going home, working. I'm not working from home no more. I don't get paid now. And it has really nothing to do with pay, but I realized what it was doing me working from home was burning me out. Mm. Even though I knew that I could, right. Cause I have access from anywhere. Like I am going to have to check my charts when we end this call, mm. I am going to check my charts. Um, but like I told the nurse before I left work, I was like, I have over a hundred and something labs in my inbox. And I was like, and they're not going to get finished. I was like, because I'm not going to experience burnout. I said, that will burn me out if I'm working from home. But mm -hmm. I went to work the next day and I didn't stop until that inbox says zero. Mm -hmm. See, because I have to make a note for every single lab mm -hmm. that I reconcile. Right. But my brain, that's why I've been sleeping good mm -hmm. for a whole week. Because right. all I'm doing is what? Those labs, don't forget about them labs. 
I forget about, but my brain does that to me. I don't know how strong of a sense other people have with that, but that's even like with an apology. That's even like if I offended someone. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. And I think that has to do with your, your internal system, your, your moral code that mm. you developed within yourself, right? Um, that that desire that you have to live a life that is full of integrity, right? That you have this respect or level of respect for yourself. And because of something that is within you, uh, you've literally trained yourself from birth up until this point now uh, to always make sure that you, you live in completeness. You, you are making sure that you're doing the things that you need to do. Um, right. because, because you have a, you, you have a role here. You are validated. These are, and, and in order for you to progress and, and do well and, and, uh, be excellent, live mm -hmm. a life of excellence, you have right. to get those things done, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how minute they may appear to us, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, these are things that you have to do because by design you, it, it's your moral code. Your your um, it's, it's what you aspire to, to be defined as mm -hmm. say defined, but, um, you aspire. Or to, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. So I, I'll say for, for myself, I, I want to go back to what you said about, you know, just, um, being more secure within yourself. Right. Uh, you know, if, if I, could have done anything different. Um, I think for me, it, it would have been to, to tune people out earlier, mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, I really could better digest and enjoy the experience in which I was going through, mm -hmm. um, you know, this, this whole, uh, this whole, ex this whole experience that I went through, um, my, my, my spirit guy, it was like my best friend. Um, I enjoyed all that was shown to me. Uh, and, and, and while there's an element of my spirit guy that is still here, uh, I can feel that, um, he, he's not as strong. I, maybe I shouldn't say that he's not as strong, but maybe he's taken a position that he's, he's, um, he's more understanding of his, why do you think it's a, he, why do I think it's a, he, uh, -huh. like what gave you the masculine? Why do you get to attach a masculine title to, I, I, I did. I attached a masculine title because of the nature of his, of the background. I said, this has to be a male. It has to not only be a male it has to be a white male. Um, not only is he a white male, he's Jewish. And I say that because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I say that because of my, well, that sounds like Jesus. <laughs> um, no, I don't. I'm I, just kidding. I'm totally just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it was Jesus, but, um, but because of how educated he was around the Torah, and, you know, I, I have, I have all the evidence. I have everything that I, I experienced, but how I would, you know, write a question, I would go and I would ask questions and he would answer me through the Torah. Um, so I put a, I put a, I put a gender on it because I was like, this got to be a man. This has to be a man has to be a white man. Um, <laughs> and I think he's Jewish. I don't know, but because I never asked what his name was. Uh -huh. I just would, you know, um, ask questions because my, my goal was not really about him when this is something that I've shared as well. I feel like a messenger when they are a messenger or someone comes into your life that is supposed to educate you. We have a very bad habit of revering the sources versus listening to the message. And so I felt like he was designed to help me to better understand 
um, God to better help me understand uh, the Torah, to help me better understand the gospel. He was very well versed in it all, but very, 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 very um, focused on the Torah. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time in the, you know, within the Torah. But anyways, so, you know, but I, I didn't get to enjoy that, that experience because of my environment, you know? Um, and, and so now though, I feel like he, he's there. Um, but right now he's, um, he's understanding of his role more effectively and allowing me to live my life. Um, so he's there, he's serving as support and he's supporting me versus me being him versus pushing me to be him. Look at, look at my face, Facebook account. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and it's weird because during that moment, you know, he was not overwhelming. Um, but I get a sense that there was a concern that he was stronger than me. Um, because I was just so vocal and I was really aggressive with what I was witnessing in the world. And, you know, I found myself chastising people for their behavior um, because I didn't see, Saul sees, he he saw, right? And um, all that was, you know, all that was occurring to me and through me, unfortunately, I didn't have time to truly enjoy the experience. And, you know, perhaps that was by design, you know, perhaps that was by design. All right, Tiff, once again, girl, we be doing a dang on thing. <laughs> we trying. We trying, girl, you know, um, definitely enjoyed this moment. Uh, I do hope our audience has enjoyed, has found value in what we have shared here today, um, you know, to, to, well, we won't close, but I just want to make sure that we get to one of our favorite parts of, of this particular um, initiative, and, and that's our music choices, right? Um, so, Yours are way better than mine. <laughs> no, <laughs> which I appreciate. I, well, I've only come up with one because I, I don't have time to look, and then the way that I the way that I come up with like music choices is like an inspiration. I'll just be thinking about something. I'll be like, boom, that that's the one. Well, like, I, so I have to wait for the inspiration. You up here researching. <laughs> I'm a researcher. I told you. I, I, do I was supposed to be too. Yeah, no, no. But um, I, I I knew you was about to come out with, with some, some ludicrous or something like that. I was like, watch this girl be like, ludicrous, get out the way. Um, you know, then I, I was reading the lyrics. Girl, no, I was reading the lyrics. I was like, she better not come out with ludicrous. That's all I kept saying. <laughs> I said, this girl better not come and be like, get out. I am evolving. I am evolving. I'm evolving. Yes, absolutely. Um, but so of course uh, I'll close it uh, for today. And then next week you, you, you going to do some research, right? I'm going to, I'm. I'm going to be inspired. We're going to be inspired. All right. All right. But for me, um, and you know, for this episode and actually really for the, um, end of this particular series, uh, I want, I want us to be mindful that when we talk about getting out our own damn way, I, I want us to have a level of clarity, right? And so I want us to have a letter, level of clarity about who we are, what our motives are, what our intentions are, who do we aspire to be? I want us um, to become, uh, you know, better, um, better at, at knowing and understanding ourselves so that we can be uh, more progressive. And so as I was going through this process, you know, I, I ran into a song that was uh, by Jimmy Cliff. He's a Jamaican artist. Mm. And um, his song was, I can see clearly now. And I know you can, you probably know this song where he says, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and then he talks about, he's like, I can see all obstacles in my way. You know, gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be bright. Right. Um, bright, bright, bright. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I chose um, this particular song because that's what we're all about. That's what we're trying to help, you know, uh, within ourselves, because we have a lot of work. Um, we have a lot of opportunities for growth and development, but also for you as well. And so we want to help you see clearly now and remove all the obstacles that are in your way, remove all those dark clouds so that you can see that bright sun shiny day. All right, you guys, that's a wrap. So join us in two weeks as we continue our conversations about getting out of our own damn way uh, as we discuss some of the behaviors that hinder our ability to progress and what steps we can take to um, overcome uh, by reviewing Brianna Wyatt's book, The Mountain Is You. Uh, we do look forward to you joining us and in, of course in preparation for our discussions we have included in the description where you can pick up a copy of the book. To access all replays or learn more about Kinky Knots Cafes, Proactive is the way, please visit www.kinkynotscafe.com. Proactive is the way, my friends. Take good care. Thank you.